All right, so now what we're going to be looking, looking at for the first part of Unit 2 is kind of going back to what we did in uh, Unit 1.3, and we talked about density. So we have something like a block of sodium, maybe, and a block of potassium. Remember the element symbol for sodium is Na, and the element symbol for potassium is K. Anyways, if you take these two, we see that potassium is more dense than sodium. And the whole idea is why. We, the next, so we didn't really talk about why, we just kind of looked at density, the math and everything, but now we're going into why. So why is it that sodium is more dense than, or sorry, potassium is more dense than sodium? And the whole reason behind that is we've got to look at the, the basic atomic structure of these. So we need to know what atoms are made of, okay? So there are three basic parts of an atom. Okay, so just we'll say one of them are electrons. Electrons have very little mass, very little mass, okay? And they're negatively charged. They do not account for much of the mass. So we know that density, again, just a reminder, that density, I'll just put it over here, is density is equal to mass divided by volume. So same volume, different mass. That's why potassium must, so potassium must have more mass than sodium if the volume is the same. So where's the mass come from? So there are two others, okay? There are protons, and protons are we're going to call it one atomic mass unit. Don't worry about it too much, uh, what that unit is, but basically it has mass, and we call it, so every proton has, is weighted as one, one atomic mass unit, it's called. All right? They balance out electrons, and they're positively charged. All right? And we don't have to worry about like where they are for now, let's just kind of look at um, what, what the basic question is, which one weighs more and why. Uh, so number three, we have uh, neutrons. And the word neutrons, uh, they, it has the word neutral in it, so it has no charge, okay? But it is the same mass as a proton. So they both have one AMU, one atomic mass unit. So this is no charge. All right, so when we know that, so these two guys create all the mass. So that's where we have to focus on, the mass of the element. So if we look at sodium, and we go to the periodic table, and that's where we're going to start using the periodic table. And if you go up to the periodic table, you'll see that sodium has a number 11 by it. So there's a number on the, on the periodic table that has an 11. So that actually is its atomic number. So atomic number is the number of protons. And sodium's atomic number is 11, so it's got 11 protons. There's also another number by it, and it's an average of numbers. And this one is, I believe, around 22.9. That's the other number, so I know it's hard for me to, hard for you to see that. 11 and 22.9. So the rest of it, so we got the atomic mass now, which is equal to the number of protons and the number of neutrons. All right, so we know that if there's 11 protons and, the, and it's 22.9, we're just going to round that to 23. We'll talk about why there's an average in the next video. But basically, let's just call that 23. So the atomic mass is 23. So we have to subtract the number of protons to get the number of neutrons, because these two equals that. So if I take away the protons, I'll have the number of neutrons. So it's 12 neutrons. Okay? So if I have 12 neutrons, 11 protons, that would be a total of 23. So my atomic mass is 23 AMU as a total because I have 12 neutrons plus 11 protons. So 23 AMU first. This is for sodium. Let's do the same thing for potassium. So I'm not going to write this again because we already know that. So potassium is one lower, one level lower, and it's got 18 protons. And the atomic mass is the number of protons and neutrons. 
So we know that there's a number by um, sodium or by uh, potassium. It's really close to 39. So we'll put 18 here, and then there's uh, another number that's right around 39. So we know that 39 minus the number of protons is going to give us the number of neutrons. So that would be 21. So now we have 21. Um, so we have 21 neutrons, right? So 18 plus 21. Again, it's 39 AMU. So, let's go back to the basic question now. Why is it that potassium is more dense? Well, we have the same volume, same block, but now we know that the mass is more with potassium because we know that atoms are made up of three things, electrons, protons, and neutrons, and one of them doesn't have any weight, so the other two to tell us the weight. So that's what helps us understand that, okay, if protons and neutrons are the weight, and we have more protons and neutrons for potassium, and we have the same volume, then therefore, potassium must have a higher density. And that's how it works. So there you go. That is why we have some elements that are more dense than others when we have the same, when, we, when we're talking about the same volume. So what I'd like you to think about now is there's some extreme cases to this, and we'll talk about that in another video, but the next video I'd like you to look at is talking about why there's an average of uh, protons and neutrons. That number, the atomic mass, is never really, the st um, a, it's a decimal number on the periodic table. Just check it out. All the elements have a decimal number. So we got to know why that is. All right? So check that out, and let's hopefully have some discussions about this uh, when you're ready. All right?